From a pamphlet, the first in the series called The American Crisis by Thomas Paine, written by him December 19th, 1776. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will, in this crisis, shrink from the service of his country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny, like hell, is not easily conquered, yet we have this consolation with us that the harder the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. What we obtain too cheap, we esteem too lightly. It is dearness only that gives everything its value. Heaven knows how to set a proper price upon its goods. And it would be strange indeed if so celestial an article as freedom should not be highly rated. Why is it that the enemy have left the New England provinces and made these middle ones the seat of war? The answer is easy. New England is not infested with Tories, and we are. And what is a Tory? Good God, what is he? I should not be afraid to go with a hundred Whigs against a thousand Tories were they to attempt to get into arms. Every Tory is a coward, for a servile, slavish, self-interested fear is the foundation of Toryism, and a man under such influence, though he may be cruel, never can be brave. I once felt all that kind of anger which a man ought to feel against the mean principles that are held by the Tories, a noted one who kept a tavern at Amboy, was standing at his door with as pretty a child in his hand about eight or nine years old as I ever saw, and after speaking his mind as freely as he thought was prudent, finished with this unfatherly expression, Well, give me peace in my day. Not a man lives on the continent but fully believes that a separation must sometime or other finally take place, and a, a generous parent would have said, If there must be trouble, let it be in my day, that my child may have peace. And this single reflection, well applied, is sufficient to awaken every man to duty. I call not upon a few, but upon all. Not on this state or that state, but on every state. Up and help us lay your shoulders to the wheel, that I have too much force and too little when so great an object is at stake. Let it be told to the future world that in the depth of winter, when nothing but hope and virtue could survive, that the city and the country, alarmed at one common danger, came forth to meet and to repulse it. It matters not where you live or what rank of life you hold. The evil or the blessing will reach you all. The far and the near, the home counties in the back, the rich and the poor will suffer or rejoice alike. The heart that feels not now is dead. The blood of his children shall curse his cowardice who shrinks back at a time when a little might have saved the whole and made them happy. I love the man that can smile in trouble, that can gather strength from distress, and grow brave by reflection. It is the business of little minds to shrink. But he whose heart is firm, and whose conscience approves his conduct, will pursue his principles unto death. My own line of reasoning is to myself as straight and clear as a ray of light. Not all the treasures of the world, so far as I believe, could have induced me to support an offensive war, for I think it murder. But if a thief break into my house, burn and destroy my property and kill or threaten to kill me or those that are in it, Am I to suffer it? What signifies it to me, whether he who does it is a king or a common man, my countrymen or not my countrymen, whether it be done by an individual villain or an army of them? Let them call me rebel and welcome. I feel no concern from it, but I should suffer the misery of devils were I to swear allegiance to one whose character is that of a sottish, stupid, stubborn, worthless, brutish man. I conceive likewise a horrid idea in receiving mercy from a being who at the last day shall be shrieking to the rocks and mountains to cover him and fleeing with terror from the orphan, the widow, and the slain of America. There are cases which cannot be overdone by language, and this is one. By perseverance and fortitude, we have the prospect of a glorious issue. By cowardice and submission, the sad choice of a variety of evils. A ravaged country, a depopulated city, habitations without safety, and slavery without hope. Look on this picture and weep over it. And if there yet remains one thoughtless wretch who believes it not, let him suffer it unlamented. <laughs>